if you are suffering with digestive issues, bloating, gas, constipation, diarrhea, reflux, uh, GERD, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, any of those things, you clicked on the right video. I'm going to tell you the most common causes of digestive problems and what you can do about it right away. So stay tuned for the end because I'm going to offer you some solutions that you can implement. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how your digestive tract works because for some people it's a big mystery and it's a, a lot more than just a stomach, which is what most people think about. Your actual digestive tract starts in your mouth and it's one long continuous tube. It becomes your esophagus and then that attaches to your stomach, which then attaches to your small intestine and your large intestine, which then ends in your colon, rectum, and anus. All of that is part of your digestive tract. So it literally goes from your mouth to your anus. And then there are some other organs that assist with the digestive process, your pancreas, your liver, your gallbladder, even your heart plays a role. So let me just go over very briefly. I'm not gonna go deep into anatomy here, but just so you have an idea of what's going on in your own body. So digestion starts in your mouth. You produce uh, enzymes in your saliva that begin the process of breaking down your food um, so that you can digest and absorb it. And then you swallow that food and it goes into your stomach, which produces some more enzymes and some hydrochloric acid. And hydrochloric acid is really important for your digestion. It's not a bad thing. Um, as many of us think it is because of watching television commercials about um, drugs that suppress your hydrochloric acid, thinking that you're not supposed to have it. And then um, your food goes into your small intestine where the, it mixes with some more enzymes as well as now it gets, it gets some bile from your gallbladder. So bile, the purpose of bile is to help break down your fat. It's almost like, it's almost like soap. So the way that you need soap to wash grease off your hands, bile helps to break down fat into really small particles so that you can absorb it. And the small intestine is also getting some enzymes from your pancreas. So your um, gallbladder and your pancreas are both um, producing uh, these substances to help with digesting and then absorbing your nutrients. So you begin absorbing your nutrition in your small intestine. That means it has to go through the intestinal wall, the small intestinal wall, and get into your bloodstream. And then the food continues moving down into your large intestine, where it uh, some more absorption happens and then it starts getting broken down into waste material, which is your poop, right? And then if all goes well, it ends up exiting your body. That's the waste uh, that you don't need. So the two organs that I didn't mention in that whole process, the liver, the liver is what produces the bile. It produces bile and stores it in the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a storage unit and the heart. And so in order for any of these processes to work, you need circulation. You need blood going into your digestive tract in order uh, for it to function, which is true for any of your organs. Every single part of your body needs blood in order to work. But it also means that if your heart is not pumping well, um, if your heart is, is tired or nutritionally deficient, it can cause a slowdown in your digestion. So we mentioned in the beginning some of the symptoms that people are suffering from regarding their digestion. People, and this is very common, I see so many people coming in 
with digestive complaints and it's becoming worse and worse and worse. I've been uh, a holistic doctor for 20 years and I'm just seeing more and more and younger and younger people coming in with all kinds of digestive issues. And people complain, a lot of people complain about bloating, uh, a feeling of pressure, or they feel like um, their middle is bigger. It's, it's actually like a balloon. Um, gas coming out of both ends. Um, constipation is very common. Some people really cannot poop at all without some kind of assistance, whether that's taking a laxative or some kind of tea or um, a, a medication. Other people have loose stool uh, frequently. People complain about stomach pain, intestinal pain and cramping, um, and then uh, reflux. That's a very common one where you feel acid coming back up, um, also known as GERD gastroesophageal reflux disorder. And then people also have inflammatory autoimmune conditions like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease where they're actually bleeding out of their small, out of their large intestine. So let's talk about the main causes of these digestive symptoms or, or disorders. And all of it, all of it is caused by inflammation in the digestive tract, inflammation and damage to the digestive tract. So the lining of your digestive tract is rather delicate and can easily be damaged. And when it's damaged, you're going to experience a symptom and it can be any of the symptoms that we just discussed. So the first thing I, I need to talk to you about is processed food, processed food. So my whole health channel is about avoiding processed food. So processed food starts off as real food, which is anything that grows on the ground, grows on a tree or has a mother and is minimally processed, meaning it can be maybe cooked or fermented um, or sprouted. That's a minimal process. But once you start messing around with it and adding chemicals and adding sugar and adding Chem, uh, um, bad, you know, chemical salt and, um, and, you know, other terrible things like preservatives and food dyes, it becomes inflammatory. Um, it becomes damaging to, to your gut. And one of the items that we have to talk about is gluten, because many people realize that when they eat gluten, they feel terrible and they, and they have um, digestive symptoms. But why is that? Why is gluten doing that? And I did do a whole video about this called Bread, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, which if you're having a gluten issue, you should watch it. But just very briefly, the gluten that is being produced today, especially in the U.S., um, is coming from a, a wheat seed that's been modified and aberrated. So it's actually the wheat that's abnormal. The wheat seed itself is abnormal, producing an abnormal gluten, which has a protein in it called zonulin. And zonulin actually disrupts the lining of your gut. So the lining of your gut has something called tight junctions in it. And that is to prevent uh, molecules from getting through that shouldn't be getting into your bloodstream. So it's kind of like a, um, it's almost like think of it as a, a, a saran wrap that keeps uh, things from, keeps it from being permeable when, when it shouldn't be. And so the zonulin, the protein in the gluten actually breaks up the tight junctions and allows things to penetrate or permeate that shouldn't be. And that is what we call leaky gut syndrome right? But it causes all kinds of damage also and irritation and inflammation. So avoiding processed food is the most important thing for gut health. Um, the second thing is avoiding glyphosate. Glyphosate is that very nasty chemical uh, known as Roundup, which not only is carcinogenic, but also causes gut damage. 
uh, one of the things that it does, uh, one of the ways that it works is it makes uh, plants more resistant to insects by damaging the gut of the insects. But guess what? It does it to us too. And we are now seeing after however many, I don't know, 20, 30 years of um, glyphosate being in our food supply, we are seeing people literally develop holes in the walls of their intestines and holes in their stomach. So glyphosate is found in GMOs, genetically modified organisms. So it's extremely important for you to make sure that you're um, avoiding eating GMOs Make sure that your foods say non-GMO on them. Um, eat organic as much as you can to avoid this very, very dangerous substance. And obviously, um, don't use it on your lawn. It's used as a weed killer. Even inhaling it can damage your gut and also cause cancer. Don't forget that. The next thing that can really damage your gut, believe it or not, is stress, chronic stress. So how does that happen? When you're under chronic stress, the part of your nervous system that's supposed to turn on when you're digesting doesn't turn on, right? You have two parts of your, of your nervous system, the part that turns on when you're sleeping, resting, and digesting and healing, and the part that turns on when you're active, alert, working, exercising. And when you're under chronic stress, the um, active one gets turned on. And that's called the sympathetic nervous system. So when your sympathetic nervous system is on overdrive because you're under chronic stress and you go to eat a meal, your digestive tract doesn't work very well because the part of the nervous system that's supposed to turn on when you're digesting the parasympathetic nervous system is not turning on, okay? So this actually interferes with your body's ability to digest properly. And it can interfere at any point in the digestive tract, it can affect your saliva. You know, you get dry mouth uh, when you're under stress. You need the saliva to digest. It can um, cause you to overproduce hydrochloric acid. It can um, slow down your gut motility, which means the movement of the gut and, and things passing through it. So, Relaxation is an important part of digestion. And even if you are under a lot of stress, you have to train yourself, train your body to be able to relax, especially when you're eating. And you, I urge everybody all the time because everybody's under a lot of stress to learn a technique for relaxing your body and turning on the relaxation part of your nervous system. If you need help with that, I'm an expert at it, um, both because of my own life and because I've been helping people with that for many years. So don't hesitate to reach out. Um, both my website and my email address will be on the description of this video if you do need help with it. And then the last most common thing that I see causing digestive damage are medications. So there are a lot of medications that are very harmful to your gut, especially non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen, like naproxen. So that would be things like Motrin and Advil and, um, and Aleve. And um, they disrupt the, the good bacteria in your gut. So your gut needs good bacteria in order to digest properly. And when you eat crappy food and take these drugs, uh, the good bacteria cannot survive. The environment of your gut is affected by it. So the good bacteria in your gut, I, I, I compare them to fish in a fish tank, right? So fish in a fish tank need, the water needs to be the correct pH for them to survive and they need the right food. And if you're not um, feeding your good bacteria properly and your, the pH in your gut is not correct, um, then the good bacteria can't survive, which will cause an overgrowth of bad bacteria, fungus, parasites, all of that. So it essentially drugs suppress your immune system. 
And by the way, the pH in your gut, a lot of people have a misunderstanding about that. A lot of people think alkaline is what's best. They drink alkaline water to uh, alka alkalinize their gut, but your stomach meat uh, should not be alkaline. Your stomach needs to be acidic. That's where your hydrochloric acid comes into play. So if you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, if your stomach is not acidic, it's going to disrupt your your digestion. So different parts of your gut need to be different pHs. There's not just one pH for the entire thing, right? That eating good quality food, you will end up with the right pH naturally, right? So God didn't create alkaline water in nature. Um, water in nature is neutral. And that's not the best way to create a more alkaline environment. Not eating crap is the best way to reduce the acidity of your body. Uh, other drugs that cause damage to your gut of narcotic painkillers just interrupt the ability of your gut to actually do this motion um, called peristalsis, which is a squeezing motion, which is what helps everything to move down. So that's why narcotic painkillers cause constipation and a lot of antidepressants do as well. There are many other drugs that cause damage or inflammation or otherwise disruption to your digestive tract. So the solution is to stay healthy and not actually need to take any medications. So I just want to share my favorite products with you. Um, I'm on a lot of gut support myself because I have a history uh, from childhood of being on antibiotics frequently. I was always sick as a kid and that also kills the good bacteria in your gut. That's another drug that's not good for your gut. Um, and then I had fibromyalgia and I was taking all kinds of medications and let's just say my, my digestion was terrible. It, it, it was since I was a kid and I was also, I had a very stressful childhood. So I always had gut issues. It's much better now, but I wouldn't want to be without the products that I depend on to help make sure that my digestion continues working. I do also eat a really clean diet. I drink really good quality water and I try to keep my stress under control as much as I humanly can. So the first product I want to talk to you about is called Rest Easy. And this is a liquid probiotic that is um, made from soil. So soil has all the probiotics that your body needs, all the good bacteria that your body needs. And what I like about this is it also has liquid turmeric in it. I just love this product. I use it a lot for with patients and I use it myself. And um, it also helps people to sleep better. So I've been sleeping much better since I started using it. I know it sounds like a commercial for it, but I just really love it. It is on my website if you're interested in getting some. And now my favorite nutrition supplement company, Standard Process, I've talked about that on many videos. Um, I use some digestive enzymes from them. They have a lot of digestive enzymes. I'm just gonna highlight the ones that I use. So this one is called Enzacor. And what I like about this besides having enzymes to help digest food is that it also has something called L-glutamine in it, which helps to heal the lining of the gut. So I love this product. I use it a lot with my patients. The next one that I take also is called Zypan. And Zypan actually has some hydrochloric acid in it. So if you are having um, reflux, it's possible that you actually don't have enough hydrochloric acid. So taking a drug like um, um, Prilosecranexium, which which suppresses your hydrochloric acid production is not actually a good idea because you need the hydrochloric acid. And some people uh, benefit from actually taking some enzymes with hydrochloric acid in it. And I can't di actually digest animal protein without taking Zypan. My next favorite product is called Gastrex. And Gastrex has some a, ho a whole bunch of different uh, digestion supports in it, but one of the things it has in there is okra slime. So the vegetable okra produces a slime that's actually very healing to the gut lining and helps pull mucus off of the gut, off of the 
little hairs called villi in your in your small intestine. Uh, if you have too much mucus on there, you can't absorb your nutrients. So um, okra is a very healing product. And yes, you can also eat okra if you like it. I don't, I don't like it. And then lastly, this is called Multizyme. And I don't actually take this one, but my dogs take it and my son takes it. And I have a lot of patients on it. And Multizyme is a great, just um, uh, kind of a broad spectrum. It has all the different enzymes in it including the pancreatic enzymes. Um, so it's actually good for pancreas support as well. And we, we have a lot of diabetic patients that do really well on this. In fact, I helped a diabetic cat recently who was having a very loose stool. Uh, we gave him s some of this and he's, he immediately got improvement. Um, now, keeping in mind that your pancreas and your gallbladder might also be playing a role, you have to be producing good bile, uh, good quality bile. So we have, and we have um, supplements that help um, improve your bile production as well. If you think that you need help with that, um, on my website, you can go on the shop page, go click on standard pro process, uh, shop standard process, and there are supplements uh, all the supplements I just talked about, um, except for the Rest Easy, which is, is a separate product on my website. And then also, if you need some bile support, there's lots of gallbladder products uh, that Standard Process has. If you need specific help, if you need me to help you figure out what's going on with your digestion, again, I'm an expert at it. I do it pretty much all day, every day. Any given moment in my office, if you walk in, you'll hear somebody talking about poop. That's just a, a, an important topic that uh, a lot of people need help with. So I hope this was helpful. And um, please reach out and let me know. Don't forget to uh, like uh, the video if you liked it. It helps other people find it. Please uh, share it with anyone you think would be um, benefit from it. And then if you haven't yet had a chance to subscribe to my channel, I would deeply appreciate it. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you soon.